you cannot look at these scenes in Gaza and not feel the same way that we all do, that this is a, an extraordinary slaughter of innocent people as you go after terrorists. Pierce, I totally doesn't expect, uh, accept what you're describing at the moment, because think about how much effort Israel is doing to make sure the Palestinians will get to a designated areas in the southwest area of Gaza in order to have a safer places, shelters, humanitarian aid, all these things Israel is doing, something that not in the past other countries did for enemy population. Now, we are dealing with a terror organization that, as a strategy, use the people and the children and the women as human shields. So they're basing all the, the bases, all their um, military bases, inside hospitals. They're basing it into UNRWA schools. They're basing it into mosques. And as you know, now we are um, in Khan Yunus. Khan Yunus is the city that Ikhya Sinwar, this archive terrorist, that planned in, in this calculated way this devil plan of October 7th. So we now must finish the job of making sure Hamas won't control the Gaza Strip. There is no other way if you want a better future for Palestinian children as well as Israeli children. But where are, where are all these Gazans going to live when this is over? You've pretty well levelled the north of Gaza. You're now going into the south to do the same there. You're shoehorning these million, several million people into a tiny area where the facilities for them are truly awful, as every independent uh, assessor is saying. But what happens after this? I mean, if most of Gaza gets destroyed and tens of thousands of Gazans are killed, what life is there left for them after this? Well, that's a very good question. You're actually referring to the day after the war. So first of all, there is still a big task to Israel to make sure the underground tunnel city is destroyed. And as I'm carrying this to remind everyone, there are over 138 innocent people kept hostage in Hamas hands, including 15 women. And by the way, it was Matthew Miller, the spokesperson of the State Department, that said the reason Hamas didn't release them in the last pause is because they're very much terrified from the idea these women will speak up for all the atrocities, the rape, the systematic rape Hamas committed against innocent women. And uh, I really appreciate the fact you spoke up for this sexual violence. But I want to tell you, I feel mm. sometimes like Jewish women doesn't count. When you think about the world's silence, when you think about your own organization saying nothing about the systematic rape, Hamas mutilized women. It, 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 there was a necrophilia. There was... Uh, innocent young women from a music festival that had a gang rape. So those kind of things, we must make sure the world won't be silenced about. And, and, and I really think that this was one of those moments of silence that was a disgrace to the UN organizations and for many women organizations by not speaking up for that. So I want to remind you that because Hamas well, like, listen, on didn't that, release our hostages. Well, listen, on, on that, I completely agree with you. But it's, it's how Israel is going about prosecuting the war on Hamas that is causing increasing concern. And it is unprecedented for the UN Secretary General to invoke Article 99 of the UN Charter. They've never done it before. Uh, and this is because what he believes is a, a, a genuine, right now, safety, security and humanitarian threat, which needs the attention of the whole UN Security Council. Um, you know, th this humanitarian aspect of what is going on in Gaza is now something that's requiring unprecedented United Nations intervention. Well, obviously, this is not the case because many times in the past, there were many types of humanitarian crises in many places. Do you think Mosul didn't look like Gaza after the Americans' airstrikes? Do you think Tokyo after American airstrikes didn't look worse than Gaza? So over 100,000 Japanese got killed in the Second World War under American airstrikes. And the reason it was, it was because the Japanese involvement in Pearl Harbor. So we need to remember who started this war. Hamas started this war. And this is not in our duty, by the way, in, in, in no way, not to protect our people. This is actually our duty to make sure Israeli children will be protect, protected in the future. And no one in the international community, including our allies, the Americans, the British, the Germans, no one is thinking there is other way besides making sure Hamas infrastructure won't exist, the military machine must be destroyed. And you need to remember that. Hamas brought it on his own people. 16 years of Hamas regime since 2005. No Israeli control on the Gaza Street. And they brought just poverty and bloodshed 
over the Palestinian people. At the moment, Ambassador, we have Israel giving us their version of what they're doing in Gaza. And the only journalists outside of people actually in Gaza, nearly 60 of whom have been killed, which is horrific, the worst death toll on journalists in living memory. Uh, but the, the, the international journalists want to get in there, but they're only being allowed in if they're with the IDF and carefully controlled. Why won't you let journalists go into Gaza and investigate this as they would in other war zones? First of all, I'm sure journalists will be allowed into the Gaza Strip. Uh, at the moment, remember that many parts of Gaza are still controlled by Hamas, and Hamas is preventing from journalists to get in. And this is why IDF is actually giving access to journalists to get in and to see with their own eyes, to be eyewitnesses. But only with happening. the IDF. And again, this is part of the reason why we want to protect them. We don't want them to get caught in a crossfire. But if we'll go back to yeah, your Yeah, but the argument, as you know, Ambassador, just to pick you up on that, as you know, what you may be protecting, as far as they're concerned, is access to reality. And, you know, again, I'll just ask you, is it not time to allow foreign journalists to go in there without being escorted everywhere by the IDF, where clearly there's a conflict of interest there believe about me, what they may or may not be prepared believe to Believe me, if there is something that Israel doesn't have anything to hide. What we do is a self-protection of our people after the br brutal attack at 7th of October. But if we'll go back to your question about the day after, one thing we realized after ongoing military operations, and this time we wanted to be final, we don't want it to be ongoing violent cycles, in order to make sure both Israelis and Palestinians will have a better future. There is no doubt the, the Gaza Strip must be, first of all, demilitarized, and the second thing is it must be de-radicalized. When you think about the education system under the UN symbol that brought these young Palestinians to grow up to be this monstrous terrorist, we need to stop that. We need to make sure the next generation will receive education of respecting the other side, just like Israelis are raised an idea that in the other side they are humans. They, they must stop dehumanizing Jews. And I, I want to tell you something. I thought anti-Semitism is out of this world. When I saw in 2023 the presidents of, of U.S., you know, yeah. Ivy League universities still don't understand... Well, I'm going the, to come to that. ..the, the scale yeah. of anti-Semitism. I'm going to come to that with my... I'm coming to that specifically with my next guest, actually. That's why I'm going to cut you off on that, Ambassador. Listen, I appreciate you coming back on the show. Yes. I think we should have a regular dialogue through this war. Like I said to you, you don't have to you know, justify October the 7th and Israel's right to defend itself after that. It's, it's how you're doing it that is the matter of concern now. And I appreciate you coming on and answering some questions. Thank you Thank very much. Thank you very much. much.